Good morning. Good afternoon, in fact, everybody. Thank you very much for uh, joining me here. Uh, this is uh, slightly unscheduled on the agenda. If you're, if you're trying to see where it was on the agenda, it's, you, you're probably not going to find it in there. And the reason for that is that it was there, then it wasn't, and now it's back in. So anyway, I'm here now. If you need to uh, talk to me afterwards, it's up there on screen. So we're going to be talking a little bit about de-risking DeFi and, and how we're, we're able to do that. And thank you, LF Tina, for introducing me as the CEO of Amulet. But actually, I'm no longer the CEO of Amulet. About three months ago, I stepped down. Now, if you haven't heard of Amulet, that, that's absolutely fine. But it was the only insurance protocol in the Solana ecosystem. And I've got a bit of a history of building dApps inside um, uh, the crypto uh, ecosystem, as well as uh, regulated fintech firms. And I like to uh, think that I've got an idea about taking risk as an entrepreneur, but also trying to remove risk out of systems. And one of the reasons for me stepping away from Amulet, or at least the day-to-day -day functions of the protocol, was this exact challenge, right? How do you de-risk DeFi? And that term risk is something I have a real love-hate relationship with. So I spent my time in crypto trying to give people options for mitigating risk and you know, tools and how they could make that user experience a lot easier and a lot safer. And I've been a little bit jaded by the mission. Let me explain a bit why I'm jaded and also how I've been able to change my own opinion on this. And that will hopefully lead us as to uh, a conclusion on where we can go as an industry. By now, you've noticed the movie behind me has got nothing to do with crypto. In fact, it came out 23 years before Bitcoin uh, was even released. Now, 10 bucks to the person who can correctly identify the movie, this, this gentleman right here. It is Back to the Future. Well done. Uh, it is, in fact, Back to the Future number one. Now, I'm also going to ask 10 bucks to, well, give 10 bucks to the person who can correctly identify what's happening on this movie right now. What's wrong with the movie right now? Exactly, deathly silent, right? There is no sound on this movie. So why is that important? And why is it important in the uh, term of, of what we're doing with DeFi? A centralized financial system, or even a decentralized one for that matter, without risk mitigation is like a movie without sound. Now, the reason why our brain likes sound is it because it adds in Trust. Suddenly, what you can see on screen actually connects with what you can hear. And you have a system that provides trust. And that's really you know, what we're missing in DeFi right now. We are missing the whole layer of trust. We are a movie without sound. Why are we missing that trust? Well. Onboarding is incredibly complicated. Uh, the whole process of setting up a wallet, getting money into it, is an absolute nightmare for anybody outside the industry. You've then got everybody giving me another huge return. I mean, I, I did a quick search to get to this slide, and, and that was the return that I, I, I got. But I've seen thousands of percent promised by protocols and not delivered. It doesn't do what it says on the tin. And then. After all of that, nobody takes responsibility. Like the idea that it's the user's fault that if you don't do your own research, when we've got thousands, literally thousands of people in the industry who are totally uncredible trying to tell us the right way to do things, it's just, yeah, it, it's a bit of a nightmare. And then once you get through all of that, You've then got this ridiculous list, and this is a short one, of all the problems that, uh, that arise. So smart contract um, hacks, rug pulls, NFT fraud, you know, the, the, the list goes on. And then if you get past that, 
You've then got the FCA, the MSA, the CFTC, the SEC, all of these people with political agendas and reasons that they might take a totally legitimate, you know, operating protocol offline. Now, I know how we've got here. You know, the idea of, you know, self-sovereignty is an important ideal that we should be holding. But the same people that tell you about self-sovereignty and that how important that is will also tell you in the next sentence that you, we are trying to get to a billion users. We're trying to get to a billion wallets. We're trying to get to a billion transactions. You know, the amount of times I hear billion said on a stage <laughs> at, at any crypto conference, you, you know, honestly, we should be onto the trillions by now. I think that's the... Uh... But look, the list goes on. So how are we going to, uh, to, to fix this? We're going to add the sound in. We're going to add in trust. And we don't need to rewrite a way of doing this. This has already been done. FinTech has actually shown us a really easy way of doing this sort of stuff. Now, I'm going to take the example of Revolut. And yes, it's the biggest, huge logo, and it's right next to Solana. Sorry about that, guys. But look, the, the point for, for focusing on Revolut for a moment and it could be any fintech neobank out there, is you've got 35 million users. Those 35 million users can, in 10 clicks, go from a brand new customer to fully signed up and invested in about 10 clicks. Maybe it's 12 in some countries, maybe it's eight in others. But that's pretty unbelievable, right? You can go from a completely new user to be invested on the NASDAQ or a another exchange. It's pretty impressive. Under the hood of Revolut, you have an entirely fragmented list of APIs and other parts that make Revolut what it, what it is. And it's really, it's a beautiful UX on the outside that is giving users that trust and making it easy for them. If you ask an average Revolut user, you know, do they worry about custodian risk? They don't. They think that the bank will be there. And honestly, at this stage, if Revolut went under, they're going to be bought by Santander or HSBC or some other firm, right? I don't worry about my uh, capital inside Revolut. Do I think they go, will go under? Probably will one day. But, you know, the, the point is, I don't worry about that because they're going to be acquired by another bank and my capital is going to be protected. And if it's not protected by them, it's protected by the governmental schemes that are in place to do so. You ask another uh, yeah, Revolut user if they're worried about smart contract risk or if, um, you know, when they're going to stake on, in, in their Revolut app, are they going to get their money back? Then they don't because they feel safe in that environment. Easy and safe equals trust. And trust equals one billion users. Now, this is very easy to say, and I haven't got a huge amount of time to, to go through why this is, but I believe that the way in which we can fix this is by taking a Revolut, a new bank, an N26, a model like this, and building from the ground up. Somebody has to take the whole stack. If we have one app, we have one API to take all of these fragmented parts of DeFi and pull it together, where we can be regulating better, we can onboard better, we can ensure better, we can provide better yield, we can be better than an existing fintech out there or the traditional system. That is a way that we can start migrating people over to the DeFi world. People don't really care too much about self-sovereignty unless it has affected them directly. If it affects you directly because of your government being, you know, bad or something that's happened in your, your lifetime, maybe you've been turned down for a bank account, whatever it has. If you've got a real legitimate reason where it affects you directly, that's when, that's when it's, it makes a real impact to you to be in the DeFi system. But that's not most of the people in the world. Most of the people in the world are able to operate with their current apps, their current fintechs, 
their current TradFi uh, uh, companies, yeah, banks. So we have to be better. We have to be faster. We have to provide all of these, th th this list. And I think if there's one app that can provide that, that's going to be the, uh, the solution. Now, does that mean we're going to have to give up our DeFi ideology? I don't believe so. I think you can have all of these fragmented sections, and you can bind it together. And there's somebody or a firm that takes responsibility for the whole chain. But it does mean that we are going to have to work together a lot more and a lot better for this to work. The API integrations between dApps is going to have to work absolutely on point. And there's going to have to be insurance throughout the whole system. Because I could have stood here on stage for 15 minutes and just tell you about insurance. But you, know, you guys know about this. You don't need to, to be told that insurance needs to be, exist in, in, a, uh, in a system. Or in fact, that Amulet is the only DeFi insurance protocol inside Solana. So here's the gauntlet, guys. If you are looking for a billion dollar or even a trillion dollar firm, this is the opportunity. It is somebody to come in and pick this up and to build the single app, the single API that, whole, that controls the entire stack from top to bottom. And that, in my opinion, is how we are going to de-risk DeFi. Not by taking out all the, all the components, but by bonding all of those individual components together and providing a seamless user experience throughout. Now, I'm about to come up to the end of my time. Thank you very much for listening to me. If you've got any questions, please do uh, throw them out. But I think I've got to run. Thank you.